In this short video, we'll talk about secondary active transport. So secondary active transport of molecules across the membrane happens using the energy derived from the electrochemical gradient created by primary active transport. So primary active transport and secondary active transport are interlinked. In fact, secondary active transport is highly dependent on primary active transport because the electrochemical gradient was built like that. Here, secondary active transport is a coupled transport. One molecule move down the gradient, one molecule move up the gradient. So here we can see there are two types of molecule, one depicted in pink, one depicted in blue. The blue molecule is moving down the concentration gradient, whereas the pink molecule is moving up the concentration gradient. Notice that here the movement of ions are happening in an uh, opposite direction. So one can also think this is an antiport. And basically, we can also have the molecule moving in same direction, but along different concentration gradient. Here in the second example, see, the pink molecule is moving against the concentration gradient, whereas the blue molecule is moving uh, as per the concentration gradient. But again, the movement is towards the same direction. So it's a sim port. But at this point, we should ask if secondary active transport is dependent on primary active transport, how? Because primary active transport builds up the electrochemical gradient. So there would be transporters, there would be pumps which would hydrolyze ATP, which would spend energy to build up this gradient, build up this electrochemical potential. And that is utilized directly by the secondary active transport. So secondary active transporters doesn't utilize ATP hydrolysis. They use the energy residing in the electrochemical gradient. So this is the primary and this is the secondary active transport. One thing we have to remember, where does the energy come from? So the energy stored in the ion gradients is utilized in the secondary active transport. Now let's jump into straight cut examples. So SGLT or sodium glucose link transporter is one of the example of uh, secondary active transport. Here notice uh, the glucose molecules which are more in the cytosolic half and the sodium molecules which are more in the extracellular half. Here the movement of sodium molecule would happen down the gradient and glucose would be moved up the gradient. And this would happen after binding the glucose and sodium in the cytosolic site, followed by a conformational change, which would release glucose and sodium into the cytosolic site. So if you follow the path, you can see uh, the sodium moved from high sodium to low sodium portion, whereas the glucose moved in the opposite direction. That means there was more glucose inside than outside. And the electrochemical gradient that was used was actually the gradient of sodium. But how the sodium gradient was built up? It was built up by sodium potassium ATPase. That hydrolyzes ATP and that pumps up more and more sodium out of the cell, building up a gradient of sodium from outside to inside. Utilizing this gradient, glucose came in. This is happening all the time in our intestines. So here is the primary active transport. Here is the secondary active transport. Notice that secondary active transporters never used ATP hydrolysis. They use the electrochemical gradient as an energy. Since the molecule are moving in the same direction, both from outside to inside, it's a sim port. Both are moving in the same direction, but not along the same gradient. That's important. Now, another example of secondary active transport can be found in cardiac muscles. So in the cardiac muscle, calcium and sodium move in the different direction. So in this configuration, calcium move up the gradient, sodium moves down the gradient. From the extracellular part, three sodium ion bound, binds to these carrier. And one calcium ion from the intracellular part binds to the carrier. This triggers a conformational change, which releases calcium on the outer side and three sodium on the inner side. Now notice that two molecules moved into opposite direction. Calcium moved out, sodium moved in. Since the, di the direction of movement is totally opposite, we can call this an antiport. But again, sodium, the gradient which was created by sodium and that electrochemical energy is used by uh, this particular exchanger to pump calcium inside, pump, pump calcium outside. 
that is why it's a secondary active transport so i hope the concept behind secondary active transport is super clear right now see you in next video